Here's question three. It has water falling into this cart, falling straight down. It says so. And the cart is rolling on a horizontal surface at five meters per second, and it's a constant speed. And we know something about it up here at three meters above the surface in terms of jet diameter and velocity. And it says, neglecting the frictional resistance of the wheels, if the cart and the water are already in it weigh W newtons, what force F is required to keep the cart moving at five meters per second? So if there was no jet and everything was frictionless, it would require no force. But because we're adding mass to it, and that mass has to be accelerated up to that five meters per second to come to rest in the cart, then we're going to have to exert a force to accelerate that fluid that's entering the control volume. So first off, I'm going to draw my control volume to exclude the jet so we can ignore the jet's mass and, and the effects of gravity on it. So here's where I drew my control volume, this dotted line here. And I'm going to make that control volume move with the cart so that everything simplifies. So if it's moving with the cart, I don't have the cart moving inside the control volume. I don't have stuff leaving the control volume as the cart rolls out the other side. So that's going to work out well for me. Once I've got my control volume set up and it's moving, I can say that the sum of the forces acting on this control volume must be equal to some of the forces in the x-direction must be equal to the x-momentum out minus the x-momentum in. Well, the sum of the forces acting in the x-direction, if this is positive x, are just F. No friction from the wheels, nothing else, no air resistance. And m dot u out, nothing's leaving the control volume. So I'm only left with negative m dot u in. Negative m dot will be density times volume flow rate, or rho times v times a, which turns out to be 627 kilograms per second. Negative from here, 627 for m dot, u in is negative 5 meters per second. When this CV is moving that way, the relative velocity of this jet is actually in this direction, at 5 meters per second in the x direction. So the relative velocity, the velocity that is seen in the control volume, is negative 5. Punching those numbers, we get a force of 3.14 kilonewtons. Moving on to the second part of the question, if the cart and the water already in it weigh W newtons, what will be the vertical reaction force pushing up on the wheels? So here's our little cart. There's going to be a force acting on those wheels and the combination of that force we'll call FR, the total FR between the wheels, acting upwards. There's gravity acting downwards, that's W. And then there's something that's going to come in because we've got to bring this jet to a stop. And the tricky part here is we know the velocity up here is 20 meters per second. It'll actually accelerate due to Bernoulli's as it comes down. Gravity will cause it to accelerate. It will be going a little faster when it actually gets to the cart. The mass flow will still be the same. The mass that came through here is the same as the mass that goes through there. So the jet's going faster when it reaches the control volume. Bernoulli's equation, V2 squared over 2G will be 3 meters plus V1 squared over 2G for the change in height. That gives us V2 equal to 21.4 meters per second. Just a little bit faster. M dot, still 627. Some of the forces in the Y direction. Again, nothing's going out. We've got negative M dot V in. The forces acting on the cart are FR in the positive Y direction and W, the weight, in the negative Y direction. And that's got to be equal to negative m dot 627 times the component of velocity in the positive y direction the jet's going down so that's negative 21.4 punch the numbers through 
and we wind up with the reaction force equal to the weight plus 13.43 kilonewtons.